I think my work with HP, which continued when they moved the calculator division from uh, Cupertino up to Corvallis, Oregon. Um, that work was very fruitful. I enjoyed the people with whom I was working. When I went up there one day, they were having uh, a picnic outside. They have a spacious lawn there. It was lovely green, beautiful day. And I thought I'd bother the project manager, Stan Mintz, and I wanted to get a solve key on the calculator. I wanted to arrange that if it's a programmable calculator and you can program the left-hand side of an equation, that then I'd like the calculator to search for the root. And I had an algorithm for doing it, which I thought would converge at an adequate speed and a way of deciding when to quit and so on. And that's what I wanted to put into a calculator. And uh, Stan had resisted me because he'd said, I've asked this, the marketing people, and they say no one has ever asked for a solve key. Of course, they wouldn't ask for a solve key. It wouldn't have dawned on them, perhaps, <laughs> that they could have it. But finally, we were at this picnic, and Stan spiked the punch, which is very much contrary to HP rules. I'm teetotal, so it didn't affect me. But Stan got jolly. And he said, I tell you what, Professor Khan, I'll let you have your solve key if you can provide me with an integrate key. I was never able to integrate when I went to college. Give me an integrate key and you can have the solve key too. Well, how could I resist that challenge? So I did come up with an integrate key that would fit in the space. The, the, the space available was very small. Just a handful of registers were available for scratch. And um, uh, Dennis Harms uh, helped me work on it and microcode it. And so we got it working, and then the solve key, and they got put into the HP 34C. And I have one, but it, its battery is dead, so I'm not going to bring it out. Um, well, the thing was, though, that the HP 34C's solve key and integrate keys were now interesting challenges since things could go wrong. Some equations don't have solutions. Some equations give you the wrong solution because when you compute the left-hand side of the equation, it round off gives you junk. And integrals can be even more interesting. So I wanted the guys who write the manuals to include this kind of information in the manual so it would help people use these very powerful keys correctly. Uh, but HP had a policy. And the policy was, we don't put tutorial material in our manuals because we're dealing with professionals like us. We know what we're doing. They know what they're doing. And besides, Professor Kahn, are you telling us that you've persuaded us to put something in a calculator that can get wrong answers? Well, um, I seduced the marketing guys, and they put in an extra chapter in the HP 34C manual. And then the, their manager said, hey, I told you not to put that in. Take it out. And they said, well, if we take it out, we're going to delay the completion of the manual, and it'll delay the, getting the calculator on the market. So there he was, blackmailed in effect. He had to leave the stuff in, and they won a prize at the Willamette Valley Technical Writers Association for technical manuals, partly because of these chapters. And when the salespeople did surveys, they found that several of their customers said, I bought the calculator because those chapters tell me how to use it, and, and I can use it more easily than I can on mainframes. So we, we were vindicated. Um, in the meantime, the financial calculators were getting uh, complicated. And that's because of something called internal rate of return. Um, I've got one of the financial calculators here. Yes, it has an IRR key. Now, 
internal rate of return is a fictional interest rate but explains what, what rate of interest are we making on our investment. And that is the internal rate of return and requires that you solve an equation which can be fairly complicated. In fact, under some circumstances, you could have a polynomial of degree in the tens of thousands to solve. But the calculator only does so many arithmetic operations per second. The slow ones are seven arithmetic operations per second. And you'd really like to get the answer in 20 or 30 seconds because most people won't wait any longer. That was a challenge. And I found a way to do it. Now we had a calculator, financial calculator. Not only was it accurate, the error is confined to one unit in the last digit displayed. Not only is it accurate, but it solves the internal rate of return problem. And it solves these problems, including some for mortgages and, and, and uh, various kinds of investments, uh, discounts. It solves them accurately and quickly, whereas on the then competing Texas Instruments, Instruments Business Analyst, you could put in the data and the calculator was supposed to solve the problem, but it would go catatonic. Or it would run, 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 never stop. Or it would give you a junk answer. And that wouldn't happen on my program. Yes. And as I recall, I thought I'd proved it. So we really had a superior beast. Well. And the success of that calculator made my next demand sound more credible. I wanted a calculator that had not just the solve and integrate keys, I wanted to have complex variables and small matrices so that it would have everything for sophomore engineering students except divs, grads, and curls. Divs, grads, and curls require a larger display. And I got them to build it. And that was, that was this one here. That's the 15C. Uh, it really is my favorite. Now, in order to get them to build it, I had to make an estimate of the market. So what I did was go to um, our library here, and I looked up all the colleges I could think of that had engineering schools. And I looked at their enrollments, and I figured that about half of the incoming class each year would want to buy this calculator. Why half? Because when I used the HP34C, the one with just solve and integrate, I would plant myself in the library or I would plant myself out in Sproul Plaza at a table and I would pretend to be working with this calculator. Students would come up and ask what I was doing and if they were engineering students, they'd say, oh, and what does that do? And I'd show them. And half of them would go to the student bookstore just on the other side of the plaza and buy one with their own money. Yes. Not waiting for a doting aunt or something like that to buy one for them. So I figured half the students are going to buy one. 